I'm Logan Page, and I wrote about the novel lawsuits brought by the DES daughters. These women's mothers took diethylstilbestrol, or DES, while pregnant, and their then in utero daughters later grew up and discovered they had a rare form of vaginal cancer and other injuries. DES was made identically by every company that manufactured it. And so there were two problems with bringing these lawsuits. First, the injuries didn't appear until 15, 20, 25 years on. And then, the women didn't have enough information to determine which drug manufacturer had actually made the drug that harmed them. The solution for the DES daughters was the development of market share liability. Under this new tort theory, every defendant that manufactured DES in the appropriate time and place would be held liable for plaintiff's injuries. They would pay the same percentage of the judgment as was the percentage of their DES market share during the relevant time. The highest court in California in a case called Sindel and the highest court in New York in a case called Heimowitz adopted this theory. And without judicial innovations like these, the DES daughters would not have been able to recover for their injuries in court. The development of market share liability speaks well of tort law. The canonical multiple tort feasors case, Summers v. Tice, had only been decided about 40 years earlier. And so it was a rapid expansion of what courts were willing to do as far as binding multiple defendants together under a single judgment, where a plaintiff didn't know exactly which tortfeasor had harmed her, but could point to a group of people, one of which she knew had been the one that harmed her. Courts were willing to issue judgments against all the defendants so the plaintiff could collect. The burden then shifted to each of the defendants to prove that it hadn't harmed the plaintiff. In addition to fighting in the courts, where they weren't always successful, DES daughters also had to defend market share liability in the legislature. Efforts by pharmaceutical companies in California and nationally to ban market share liability failed. But later efforts to ban market share liability were successful, in Ohio and Georgia at least. The Supreme Court also could have gotten involved. The drug manufacturers that lost Sindel and Heimowitz sought review at the Supreme Court. The justices declined to take the case. But if they had, and if they'd ruled for the manufacturers, they would have outlawed market share liability across the country. Since the 1980s, market share liability has been largely limited to the DES context. DES was never patented, so hundreds of drug manufacturers were able to sell an identical product. It didn't matter where you bought it or from which manufacturer, the drug was the same. DES also caused a signature injury in the DES daughters. This made it difficult for the drug manufacturers to plausibly argue that something else instead of DES had harmed them. All that said though, market share liability was a success, at least in so far as it allowed the DES daughters, thousands of them, to recover financial damages in court for their injuries.